Okay, for this portion, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the basics of Google Chrome. Uh, Chrome is what we are transitioning to as the default web browser for the district. Uh, and in order to make sure that we're maximizing the features of Chrome, uh, I want to make sure that we, we know all of the capabilities and all the things that are there. Uh, first of all, one of the best parts about Chrome is that it integrates with your Google account, so therefore once you open uh, Chrome, it logs you in. You can see up here in my drive that I'm currently logged in as kfirst at isd186.org. You may also notice that up here in the corner um, I have this little alien guy and that's because I have a profile set up in Chrome. So when I open Chrome it logs me into Google. I don't need to go to the school website and log in or go to google.com and log in. It just does it automatically. Um, the three bars, which is the settings for Chrome, you'll notice down here it's signed in as. Uh, if your Chrome doesn't have a profile, that is if it doesn't have any type of picture or anything up here, um, it's because you're not signed into a profile. So you want to do that and then once you do that once, it will remember who you are uh, and it'll keep you logged in. It also then keeps track of important things such as apps or extensions that you install so that if you were to transfer between different devices a uh, laptop to an iPad or even to your iPhone or to a PC or what have you anytime you log into Chrome that information will be saved so it's kind of an important thing to set up. Uh, beyond that you'll notice that there also uh, are a couple of other features for instance up here there is this little green bubble and the green bubble is the Google Hangouts bubble. And this is what allows you to do video calls. Um, it also allows you to do voice calls over the internet. So if, for instance, you needed to have a, a meeting and you wanted to do a video chat because you're not with someone, um, or you can, alternatively, you can teach your students how to do this um, at home. And they would be able to video chat at home with each other in order to work on assignments or whatever. Um, this first needs to be installed though. Uh, it's an extension and it doesn't just come on there automatically. So in order to install extensions you go down to into your settings here and you have all of your your various tools but if I click on settings we will pull up the Chrome settings and you'll notice again here I am I'm signed in I can I can on startup choose where what I want to do do I want to open a new page Do I want to open a specific set of pages this could be useful if you have pages that you go to all the time such as the school's website um, or something you always want to open up the appearance get themes is how you change the background so if you notice you think that my Chrome looks a little bit different than yours in the background here it's because I've added a theme uh, and that's get themes is how you change that okay and down here at the bottom it's got a couple of profiles that I have in there now up here on the side you'll see extensions if I click this these are the extensions that I have installed right now we're all defaulting to install Google Docs so that should be there uh, and I also have hangouts on here if yours doesn't have Hangouts, you need to click Get More Extensions, which is right here, and that will take you to the Chrome Web Store. Chrome, just like your iPad or iPhone, has apps as well. There are apps that would show up so that whenever you click a new tab, there the icons are in here in the background and you can jump right to it. So for instance, if I wanted to jump right to Prezi, I can do that. If I have a Schoology or an Edmodo account that I use with kids, I can jump right to those and have those in the background. So it's a quick way to get into the things that you use most often and also make sure that those things are always available. Uh, one of the coolest parts about Chrome is in the integration of these apps is just about everything that can be done via software can be done uh, through a browser and either a free or paid account. So for example, with Adobe Photoshop and some of the more advanced editors or editing software uh, for photos, uh, Pixlr does a lot of the same things. Um, and Desmos is an example of a graphing calculator that's available. Uh, several people are using Evernote both with students and just to keep themselves organized and keeping track of things. 
Um, Prezi, people have been using uh, as an alternative to PowerPoint. Dropbox, another alternative to Google Drive to store information, and so on. And you'll notice that sometimes even some of our textbook makers also have apps. So Pearson Open Class, for instance, is right here. If I go back here, you'll see that it's the Chrome Web Store. It looks very similar to the iPad Store, or if you're on an Android device, the Google Play Store. You can search for whatever it is that you which you'd like. New and exciting things usually pop up here. So for instance, there's a web clipper for that integrates with Evernote. Google Hangouts, which is almost always scrolling across the, the top, is the one that you want. Otherwise, you can also search for it. And just make sure that it's the that the maker or the developer is Google. So for instance, Hangouts call plus uh, right here. Um, this is the one we want, Hangouts from Google. The difference is that this will integrate with your Google Plus if you have one, um, and this will integrate with Google Plus Plus. It drops in uh, the bubble into your Google Chrome, and also you, so that you can call from Gmail or your calendars as well. So this is really the one that you want. And you go through and you click free in the same way that you do for um, in the App Store. I don't have free right here because I've already installed it onto my Google Chrome. You can go through and select, uh, kind of browse through here, and whatever you decide to use will be attached to your user ID. So it will show up once you click a new tab. It will stay here until you decide to get rid of it. And that way you can kind of decide what it is you want to use. If you run out of space, it of course will create another page for you in the same way that uh, the iPad will as you continue to add more and more apps.